Welcome to the bush. In this episode, we're celebrating St. Patrick's Day. I've got a great camping trip in store for us. As you can see behind me, uh, there's a pile of boards and debris and stuff left over from when I tore down the dilapidated shed. Uh, check that video out if you haven't. Uh, camping in a dilapidated shed. Uh, I did one last camp out, then I tore it down and I used the materials on my cabin. So now that the snow is off the ground and everything for the winter, I've got a pile of debris here that I need to clean up. So this is the new pond location. So we're going to do that, but I'm also going to do an experiment with my tent. And on top of that, we're going to cook us a corned beef brisket flat right over the fire. <laughs> triumphant. Whoever made these tent poles should be drug out into the street and shocked. Well, now that that three ring circus is done, I think it's time for a well-deserved step two. Now, what would St. Patrick's Day be without your classic Irish stout? Now, you can't drink a stout out of the bottle. So, I had to bring a mug with me. Yep. Cheers. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. Uh, I'm probably going to have several of these. the new pond location is home to my pop-up camper so I'm totally gonna steal the mattress out of it The wind is supposed to die down as the day goes on, so I'm going to wait and start my fire after it calms down a little bit later, and uh, and then you'll see what I got in store here. Well, the wind has died down, thankfully, but it's still a little windier than I'd like. My main concern is uh, all the dry grass in this field behind me. Uh, it's March, so it's that time of year when grass fires happen, so uh, I have to be very careful. 
I don't think there's going to be a risk this evening though. So, uh, but one of the things that I want to do is you'll see I've got a roll of plastic here. I've been wanting to try this for a long time. I did notice when I camped on the platform that I was getting heat from the fire inside my tent. And even though it was pretty cool that day, I was still staying fairly warm in the tent. So what I'm thinking is we're going to turn this into a Moore's Kohansky super shelter by, by using the greenhouse effect from this plastic. We're going to put it over that and the fire tonight will emanate into the tent using the greenhouse effect. Uh, check out Moore's Kohansky and the super shelter idea. If you have some plastic, it's a great survival tool. It's a great way to stay warm in cold temperatures. Uh, 28 degrees tonight, so uh, it's going to be cold. It's going to be well below freezing, so I want to make sure that I'm nice and warm. And if I can take this tent out with a little bit of plastic and go hiking in the cold weather, how awesome is that? Just what we need, right? More stuff for the wind to catch. Uh, I'm gonna do some adjustments here and figure out how to secure it down to the tent. And then I'm gonna try to figure out how to uh, get in and out of it without too much trouble. Well, she's most definitely not pretty. And uh, I may have to uh, get either run another layer of plastic over or get a bigger piece of plastic in order for this to be a fair experiment because as you can see, the plastic isn't wide enough to come down on both edges. So, you know, uh, we might get a lot of heat loss from that, but uh, we're gonna give it a try. Uh, we'll see what it feels like in there later when we get a fire going. 72 in the tent, just running on solar right now. 42 degrees outside. How cool is that? I'm gonna show you the easiest reflector wall that you will ever build. Uh, normally you would use pieces of wood for this, but I happen to see that there was two steel posts back here. I'm gonna turn them upside down and shove them into the ground. The ground's really soft right now. Normally you couldn't do that. Yeah, something like that. Uh, yep. That can work. Get yourself some cheap aluminum foil. This is the Aldi's aluminum foil, and this stuff sucks. It like breaks down in the fridge and leaves aluminum bits in your food. So, but this should work just fine for what we're gonna do here. <laughs> I almost bet in the next 30 minutes the wind rips this to shreds. When I was in Boy Scouts, our Scoutmaster had one of these, and uh, I'll never forget the, the sound that it makes, you know, and just, it's going to bring me back, but I picked up one of these on sale 
and uh, thought I'd try it. I'm still cleaning up where that shed was, and uh, it's going to take a while for the food to cook. So to keep me occupied, I'm going to see if I can brighten up the night a little bit and uh, keep on cleaning up where the shed was for the time being. Problem is, I gotta put this thing all together. Of course, it doesn't come assembled. Now that is pretty cool. Check it out, there was this old chair in the shed and I just didn't have the heart to throw it away. I think I'm gonna have to bushcraft it into something. But it has no legs, so I set it on a concrete block. And now I have the perfect spot to sit and dice my vegetables and whatnot. And a nice little work surface.
Oh, man. That most certainly didn't suck. When you eat your meal off of an old board that you happen to find, you don't have to do dishes. They're disposable. That's what I'm talking about. Boy, that was delicious. But do you remember these? The potato skins. No, we're not going to throw them out. We're not going to burn them in the fire. Nope. Save your potato skins. Especially if you're using a knife because you get a lot of the flesh, you know, with them. But uh, put them in a pot. <laughs> See this guy right here? See, it's got some potato on it still. So put them in a pot. And uh, it would be best if you had a skillet. I don't have a skillet with me on this trip. So throw them in a pot, a kettle, a skillet, something. And take about, I don't know, depending on how many potatoes you made, how many potato skins you have. I'm going to use about three quarters of a stick here. You want it pretty greasy. You want to use some oil or some butter or something like that. But you know, your true prepper, your true survivalist would never let their potato skins go to waste. Anyway, drop that butter in there and season these bad boys up with some salt, pepper, garlic, and onion. S-P-O-G in our case. And if you really want to make it good for potato chips, you'll do spog which is salt, pepper, onion, garlic, but you'll do spogum, salt, pepper, onion, garlic, and MSG. Because MSG is one of the things you'll find on almost all your bagged potato chips and onions and uh, Cheetos and different things like that. So you wanna make that really good, do that. So got the potatoes, got the butter, got the S-P-O-G-M, spogum in here. And we're going to just saute this over the fire until we have some beautiful crispy potato chips. Now you have some little potato chips. You can put them in a bag or whatever. And you can stack on them the next day. Or later on that night. But at least your potato skins aren't going to waste. Well... Ladies and gentlemen, I made it into the tent, and as you can see, I'm down to a t-shirt. This thing's working. Uh, this is pretty incredible. It's 28 degrees outside, and here in the tent, it is 64 degrees. This Morse Kohansky Super Shelter idea completely works and this isn't even refined so i do have a very good sized fire going outside but it is literally almost room temperature in here 64 degrees um that's incredible and i bet if i stay in here a while longer just with my body heat and everything else it's probably gonna i would not be surprised if it gets up to 70 degrees in here now, here's the thing. The plastic wasn't wide enough to come down completely over all the sides of the tent. So I can refine this idea some more and make it even more efficient. This is pretty incredible. 28 degrees outside, 64 degrees in my tent. I'm in here with a t-shirt. This is pretty cool. Well, everybody, I'm uh, I'm feeling pretty tired, so I just stoked up the fire and took a leak, and uh, I think I'm going to sack in for the night. So uh, I'll see you all in the morning.
All right. Well, it's time for our typical post camp out chat and recap. Uh, we're not going to have coffee today uh, for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is uh, the wind has kicked back up and there's a really dry field behind me and I just don't want to risk uh, building the fire back up. And the second reason we're not having coffee is I'm out of water. Uh, this is two campouts in a row now where I've ran out of water. Uh, and I'm taking quite a large amount with me. I'm taking uh, two water jugs, three water jugs, and if you count my canteen, plus uh, a 1.75 liter bottle of water, I'm taking close to a gallon of water with me. Uh, it's not enough. It's definitely not enough. And you know, the beers don't help either, but uh, but I definitely, I wake up the next day and th throughout the night very thirsty. And uh, I also have to cook with that water. So it's duly noted that uh, from now on, I'm going to bring more water. It's going to increase the weight of my pack for sure. But I, I'll just have to, I, I've been doing pretty good at keeping pack weight down. So I'll be just fine. Uh, so the main thing that we learned in this in this camp out and the main purpose of this camp out was to see if the uh, plastic would work on the tent as a Morse Kohansky shelter I give that one thumbs up and one thumbs down and I'll tell you why it was it got up to 65 degrees in the tent last night with the fire blazing but the thing is, you had to keep the fire blazing, which means you had to unzip the tent and keep throwing stuff on the fire. In order for that to stay, uh, you know, that kind of temperature inside there, you have to have a rip-roaring fire, and that's just hard to do. Uh, another thing is, you want to make sure you use a cheap tent if you do this, because I do have a few spark holes on my tent uh, today. So, nothing major, but there was a few sparks that did hit the tent so you want to make sure that you uh, you use a cheap tent the aluminum foil uh, reflector walls I've I've seen so many people do that and I give it two thumbs down uh, when I woke up this morning there was aluminum foil all over the yard here and and uh, it, 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 it was completely ripped off the poles uh, maybe if you used a little heavier quality of aluminum foil but now, nah, two thumbs down. Use something else for a reflector. It's it's worth the extra time. So we did learn a lot. Uh, another thing I learned was when the sun came up this morning, and it started beating through that plastic, the greenhouse effect was very clear. It got up to 91 degrees in my tent, I believe, at one point, and I had to get out and remove the plastic from the tent because the greenhouse effect was so strong. So you could definitely. You could definitely use it if you wanted to sleep in in a sunny on a sunny winter day. Uh, that'd be that'd be almost worth trying. But I think I'm pretty satisfied with the results of this experiment, and I think I'll just stick to tent camping when it's just a little warmer. Uh, it wouldn't have to be a lot lot warmer, but you know I'd say above 40 degrees for sure. Uh, it actually got down to 26 degrees uh, last night, but. Again, you know, this morning at 8 o'clock, it was pretty warm in my tent. So I guess that's that. And uh, I'm going to get uh, get things torn down and back to the house and get a tall glass of water. Mm -hmm.